Hey there, it's Stephanie from Janku, and today I'm going to show you how to clip and mask in the new Inkscape 1.0 beta. So let's start by creating some shapes. I'm going to create a square. Let's create a circle. I'm going to use this blue here, maybe this blue, and I'm going to create a star. You know what? Since we're, I want to show how images work. Let's uh, download an image. And for this, I'm going to use Unsplash, which is a really cool website where you can download a bunch of free images. And this cat is really adorable. Let's download this. Say thanks. Thank you, Ionet Komen. And we have our JPEG. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to drag the image over. All right, let's click out of this. Let's get back to our Inkscape document. So to import that, that image, I'm going to try to actually drag and just put it right in here. Hit OK. Sometimes this crashes the program. I'm just going to give this a shot. What is going on? What is going on here? Don't take a high res image and just try to drag and drop in your canvas, unless you have a better computer. My computer cannot handle this right now. Help, I need help. I need help. I need help. Let's try this again. Let's try to import that image. I'm going to try it this way. Okay, so when importing an image, just go to File, Import, and select your image to import because I tried to just drag and drop and that created many issues. All right, guys, I'm back. So I have redrawn everything because uh, Inkscape crashed. I don't want to blame it on Inkscape because this computer kind of sucks. So let's go and let's start with the clipping mask. So I, I downloaded this image because I wanted to demonstrate that you can really clip with anything that you, you have here. So let's say that I want to clip this image so we have the kitty in a star shape. Imagine that the star is like a cookie cutter and we're pushing the cookie cutter down on the image to cut off all the extra that we don't want. Well, the cookie cutter should be on top of the image. It shouldn't be below. So if we have our cookie cutter below the image, well, you can't stamp out a cookie that way. So make sure to go to this top section and raise the selection to the top so we have our cookie cutter right on the top. So now, once you have the other image selected, so they're both selected, and you can do that by clicking one image or clicking the object, holding shift, and then clicking the other object, and then going to the object menu and go to clip and select set and you see that we got the little kitty all clipped out in a star because that is a star kitty. All right, so we have our clipped kitty. Now I'm going to hit Command Z to go back because we're going to try now different things. So let's say that the kitty is with its favorite ball. Now remember, this is our cookie cutter or this is what we're using as our cookie cutter right now. Make sure the cookie cutter is always at the top and you'll know that because when you move it around, you'll see that it overlays the other objects. So let's say we want part of the ball and part of the kitty. I'm just going to click, hold, and drag so that I can select all these objects. We're going to go back to object and clip and set. And you will get the circle and the kitty in there. Oh, that's so cute. Now what's cool about doing clipping 
masks is that it doesn't actually destroy the object. They all retain, they're, they're all there. They're just invisible. So the ball is there, it's invisible. The rest of the picture of the kitty is there, it's invisible. If you decided that you wanted those objects back, all you have to do is make sure to click back on this, this star, go to object, go to clip, and then you can click release and you have it back. So the interesting thing was it kept this object as the clipped version, but we can, of course, undo that by releasing. Now in the new Inkscape, there's this new option to clip and then set inverse. And this is really cool because what it allows you to do is, like it says, do the inverse of what a clipping mask does. So let's say that I want to stamp out a circle from this star. Well, I can't stamp it out because remember, whatever object remains on the top is the one that's going to stamp out or cut out just like a cookie. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go up to these options above. I'm going to raise the selection to the top. Now I have my circular cookie cutter, and then I'm going to remember, select all objects that are going to be a part of this clipping project or clipping task. And I'm going to go to clip. If I hit set, all the circle was, it doesn't even matter what color it was, it just clipped, it just cut out the star. All right, let's, let's hit Control or Command Z on my Mac and go back. Now, if we're doing the inverse, let's see, inverse is the opposite. So what that means is instead of getting rid of the star and making everything around the star invisible, well, what it's gonna do is say, no, let's keep the star and let's have the circular cookie be cut out and disappear. So it's just gonna get rid of that object. So if we, again, select all of these objects and just note that the cat is not a part of this. So let's select those once again. Go to object, go to clip, go set inverse. And you'll see that it clipped the circle out of the star. And for some reason, oh, there we go. I was like, what is going on here? Um, so you can see that happen. Now, just like doing the regular clip without the inverse, you can select release and it will go back to the original. My program is acting up right now. That should be a star. I actually do not understand what happened right there. You can also just hit Command Z. That is the magic of Inkscape is just to hit back. Perhaps that is something that is supposed to happen. Let's try that again. This is a beta version, so we have to understand that some of these things may have bugs. And what I'll do is I'll go to the Inkscape GitLab um, section to see if this is an, a current issue that they're working on. And if not, I'll, I will um, report a bug. But let's just try that one more time. Let's release that. I don't believe this is supposed to happen. So that will be something we, I think they can work on. All right, well, let's move on to the next thing. Now mask is very similar to clipping. And I'll show you, this is a mask. Some people are like, what, what is the difference between mask and clip? So the mask, what that does it, it, is it allows you to create some sort of transparency when you're clipping. Let's let's demonstrate. So we got the square and because it's below the image and I'm trying to clip the square out of this image, I'm going to raise it to the top just like I would the clip. Okay, let's just say I want the face. Now again, I'm just gonna demonstrate. If I clip it and hit set, you're gonna get just the cat face. Oops, I didn't select the cat image. I'm gonna get the cat face. All right, let's hit Command Z. Now, if we're using mask, what it will do is it will 
clip it, but it will create a transparency through it. So what this really works well with is gradients. Let's get our color menu. And I'm just getting familiar with this program still, so bear with me. Fill and stroke right here. Let's open this up. Okay, so we're going to make this square into a gradient by going to the fill and selecting linear gradient. You can also do radial. Let's try radial. And the colors don't really matter. Whatever you're selecting in here really doesn't matter. Pretty much like the clipping mask. It doesn't really matter what colors you have in there. Just to sh make it easier for us to understand going to make the center black and I'm going to make the outside edges not op I'm going to make them opaque and then I'm also going to make them white for the mask what it does is it says you're going to use this square as a cookie cutter but anywhere where it is white show through the, the image color and anywhere where it's black do not show just treat this as this this color is supposed to be here and it's it's not supposed to be visible here as much and everywhere where it's white this is signifying to the program that we want to see more transparency here I'm going to go to the selector tool. I'm going to click, drag, and select all. And then I'll go to object, mask, set. And what you'll see is everywhere that there was black, it has made it so it is blurred out. It's, it's whited out. It's, the color is not coming through. So I guess what would be a better idea here is if we did the inverse of this gradient. So let's edit that gradient. I went to this tool, going to select this middle part, I'm gonna make it white, and then this outer part, I'm going to make it black. And I'm gonna stretch this out just a little bit. And we're gonna select the pointer tool. We're going to go over both objects, go to objects menu, mask, and set. And now we got this little gradient going on where the kitty's head is, or the eye is, much more opaque and the rest is more transparent. Now let's try this with the star. I'm going to select both of these objects. I'm going to go up to Object, Mask, Set Inverse. And just as we did with the clipping mask, you'll notice that it didn't make the points of the this, the uh, star invisible did the opposite of the gradient effect that we would expect if we just did a regular mask. So if we go back to object, we go back to mask and we click release, we should get the original objects we had and they have both disappeared. This could be a glitch. But that is a basic understanding of how the mask and the clip function works. If you have any questions, feel free to leave questions and comments below. I will be doing these Inkscape videos every Wednesday and working with the new 1.0 beta, using it so we can also report bugs and make this software the best it can be. It's free, it's open source, and why wouldn't we support it? So thank you for tuning in. See you next week.